Hi, recently I purchased Pocket Beagle 2 and in this video I'm going to explore it and get started with it by booting an embedded Linux distribution based on Debian. Pocket Beagle 2 is the second iteration of the Pocket Beagle that I've reviewed several years ago. This device is tiny, it's cheap and it's targeting hobbyists, developers and students. Let's start with unboxing Pocket Beagle 2. It comes in this plastic small box, uh, which is very easy to open. According to the information on the back, this board has been made in Vietnam by Seed Studio. And if you have been keeping an eye on my channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Xiao modules by Seed Studio, which I use in various Internet of Things. The box also includes this small paper leaflet with getting started guide written in various different languages. Also, as part of the packaging, we can see the brief technical specifications, which include the exact name of the Texas Instrument System on a chip. Uh, it lists 512 megabytes DDR4 RAM, dual core programmable real time unit subsystem, and various connectors. Most notably, USB on the go, micro SD connector, and 72 pin expansion female headers with power and battery input outputs. This includes analog inputs as well as digital input output pins. The core component of Pocket Beagle 2 is the Texas Instrument System on a chip AM6254, which features GPU plus quad core 64 bit ARM Cortex A53 CPU running at up to 1.4 GHz. The board has 512 megabytes DDR4 RAM. Also, it features a Texas Instruments Cortex uh, M0 Plus microcontroller. The dimensions of this single board computer are 55 by 35 millimeters. Beware an important remark. Initially, Pocket Beagle 2 was released on the market with revision A0 that came with a dual core CPU without GPU. However, as of the moment, Pocket Big 2 comes with revision A1 that features the mentioned Texas Instruments AM6254, which is quad core and has GPU as part of the system on a chip. Let's zoom in and you can see the Citara system on a chip, which is in the middle of the printed circuit board. The Texas Instruments logo is in the left upper corner of the chip. There is a small text that indicates the exact model AM6254A. Let's have a closer look at the front side of Pocket Beagle 2. On the left, we have power and charging LEDs, USB-C connector, user LEDs, and a couple of buttons, power and user button. On the right side, we have a JTAC uh, debug connector. In the middle of the printed circuit board, we have the system on a chip from Texas Instruments and the uh, RAM memory, which is 512 megabytes DDR4. On the back side of Pocket Beagle 2, we have the UR debug connector. It is the same form factor as uh, on Raspberry Pi 5, which means that you can use Raspberry Pi debug probe for it. We have a micro SD card slot from which we can boot an operating system, and we have the so called CAPE headers for attaching uh, external devices, for example, out on boards. Having just half a gigabyte of RAM may sound very limited to a lot of people, but actually for a headless device, this is still perfectly fine. On top of that, Pocket Beagle 2 is very affordable. It costs about 25 euros and you can purchase it from Mauser or DigiKey. Mauser Electronics is probably the largest and definitely among the most popular distributors of electronic components worldwide. You can find their Pocket Beagle 2 for about 30 US dollars, which depending on the exchange rate is about 25, 26 euros as of the moment. By the way, my um, open source hardware development boards under the brand Anavi are also available at Mauser. I'm living in Bulgaria, this is in Europe, so by default I'm looking at the prices in euros. One of the cool things about Mauser is that they offer free shipping to here for orders above 50 euros. Pocket Beagle 2 is also available from other distributors of electronic components. For example, you can get it also from DigiKey. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison between Pocket Beagle and Pocket Beagle 2. The new version has the same form factor and dimensions as the very first Pocket Beagle. However, there are some significant 
changes and improvements. Most notably, the micro USB connector has been replaced with USB-C, which is the de facto standard for nowadays. And also, Pocket Bigo 2 has adopted the specific connector for debugging over UART that has been introduced with Raspberry Pi 5. The packaging of Pocket Bigo and Pocket Bigo 2 is the same. In terms of connectors, one of the obvious advantages of Pocket Bigo 2 is that it comes with pre-soldered female headers for attaching a cape. And by the way, a cape is the standard term for add-on board for Pocket Bigo. By the way, these female connectors have been soldered to Pocket Bigo 2 using the surface mount technology, which is very convenient for mass manufacturing with pick and place machines. It's very important to mention that both Pocket Bigo and the new Pocket Bigo 2 are open source hardware. The design files have been shared so that anyone can study and modify them and they have been both certified by the Open Source Hardware Association. The very first version of Pocket Bigo, which was released in 2017, was also with Texas Instrument CPU. However, it was packaged by Octavo Systems in the so-called System in a Package that features both the CPU and the RAM in the same chip. However, Beagle Board Foundation decided to go with a different strategy for Pocket Beagle 2. As you have seen at the beginning of the video, we have separate chips for the system on a chip from Texas Instruments and the DDR4 RAM. As far as understood, the reason for this decision is to simplify the supply chain and the production. Pocket Beagle 2 is tiny, cheap and capable of running embedded Linux, so we obviously need to compare it to Raspberry Pi Zero. And the quick verdict is that I prefer Raspberry Pi Zero, especially version 2 with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. Both boards are tiny and um, the dimensions are different, but Raspberry Pi Zero has um, the 40-pin header which makes it uh, compatible with a lot of add-on boards that exist for Raspberry Pi and in general of course Raspberry Pi has a bigger community and better ecosystem compared to BeagleBone. Sorry about that but that's the truth in my opinion as of the moment. Now let's download an image based on Debian for Pocket Beagle 2, flash it on a micro SD card and boot this single board computer. The easiest way to achieve this is by installing and using BeagleBoard Imaging Utility. This is an open source software with graphical user interface that runs on macOS, Windows and Linux distributions. I'm Ubuntu user, so on my PC I'm going to download the version for Ubuntu slash Debian for AMD64. After successfully installing it using the dpkg command in the terminal, I've opened the Beagle board imager, selected Pocket Beagle 2, uh, selected Pocket Beagle 2 Debian image, which is the recommended image, and as a destination, I've selected the micro SD card. I didn't apply any um, custom configurations, but you have the option to do this before writing the image. Once you're ready, uh, click right, confirm and um, wait for a while until uh, the image is uh, being downloaded and after that flashed uh, to the micro SD card. Thanks to the magic of modern technologies and in order not to waste your time, I've speeded up the whole process in the video. I have successfully flashed the Debian image on the micro SD card and now in order to boot the board I need a couple of cables. First I'm gonna use this USB-C cable as well as uh, USB to UART debug dongle with an appropriate cable that fits into the debug UART connector on Pocket Beagle 2 which is the same as the connector on Raspberry Pi 5. The wiring is super simple and straightforward. It includes three steps. The first one is to plug the micro SD card on which I flashed the Debian image in the back where the micro SD card slot of Pocket Beagle 2 is. So here is my desk from another point of view. I have one of my ThinkPad T14 uh, Generation 1 laptops. I have the Pocket Beagle 2. I have the USB-C cable and 
also a USB to UART debug dongle with uh, an appropriate cable that fits the connector on the Pocket Beagle 2. So the second step of the wiring is to connect Pocket Beagle 2 to my computer using the USB to UART dongle. After that I will open a terminal and in the terminal I will execute the screen command with bolt rate 115200. The third step is to connect the laptop to Pocket Beagle 2 using the USB-C cable. As soon as I plug the USB-C cable, Pocket Beagle 2 will boot. Here is a closer look at the terminal where we have the serial communication. As soon as I plugged in the USB-C cable, Pocket Beagle 2 booted. So first we have the bootloader which loads the Linux kernel and after that it loads the Linux distribution. We have Debian and we are in command line interface. The default user is Debian and the default password for it is temp pwd. If you remember from the previous chapter of the video, when I was flashing the Debian image to the micro SD card, I had the option to customize it with my own user and password. However, I left the default values. So now on first login, I'm asked to change the password. Finally, after changing the password, I can log in so we can run a few uh, commands to check out the system. We're running Linux kernel version 6.12. Using the LSB release command, I can also check the Debian version. We're uh, running release 12 with codename bookworm. After that, I run a few other commands to check the CPU information as well as the memory information. We already know that this CPU is capable of running at up to 1.4 gigahertz and uh, we have just 512 megabytes of RAM. I repeat, this is totally fine for experimenting as well as for headless embedded Linux devices. Now comes the more interesting part. I run the IP command which returned a list of network interfaces and the assigned IPs to them. If you remember, I connected Pocket Beagle 2 to my laptop using the USB-C cable and on the USB interface we have IP address 192.168.7.2. So we have established a network connection over this USB interface which means that I can log in remotely to Pocket Beagle 2 over SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell and it is a very popular protocol for remotely logging to other computers over the command line interface. So as you can see in the video, I've opened another tab in my terminal and I used SSH to log in remotely to the Pocket Beagle 2 where I executed a couple of additional commands. I know that a lot of the viewers of this channel are actually advanced Linux users, so for them SSH is like walking the park. But if you are new to Linux, definitely have a look at SSH. As you have seen in this video, getting started with Pocket Beagle 2 is straightforward and very easy. Let's summarize what we've learned. Pocket Beagle 2 is a new open source hardware single board computer designed by the Beagle Board Foundation and released on the market in 2025. It comes with Texas Instrument System on a chip, 512 megabytes DDR4 RAM and as of the moment there is a Debian 12 image with Linux kernel 6.12 available for Pocket Beagle 2. I think that as of the moment, Pocket Beagle 2 is the most affordable, modern, open source hardware single board computer capable of running Linux on the market. My first experience is awesome. I've enjoyed using Pocket Beagle 2 while making this video. Uh, the device is targeting students, developers and hobbyists. If you are among these groups, I highly recommend you to give Pocket Beagle 2 a try. As a next step, I plan to build my own custom Linux distribution using the Yocto project. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. See you soon!